Hey guys, clear your calendars. 21 Days of Beauty is back at Alta Beauty. With daily beauty steals of 50% off the must-haves, it doesn't get better than this. This week only, perfect your skin with Mineral Veal Finishing Powder by Bare Minerals. Grab the Anastasia Brow Wiz Pencil and glam for a night out with the Ultimate Love Lipsticks and Lip Definers by Becca Cosmetics, only at Alta Beauty. With 21 Days of Fabulous Finds, what will you discover? Harry Inn, event ends April 4th. Alta Beauty, the possibilities are beautiful. Guys, we're back with another episode of X on Nicole Happy Hour. This is your host, Nicole Kane. And Amber Woods. I feel like I shouldn't say my whole name anymore. I'm Why? I say Amber. Did you get married? Like, what's... Girl, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and your other co-host, Sheridan Chanel. And of course, <laughs> welcome to the X on Nicole Happy Hour podcast. We're a little rusty, y'all. Like, you know, it's been a couple months since we recorded. I'm trying to get my vocal tone together. In our last podcast we did a few days ago, we was kind of yelling at each other. <laughs> We was like we were just excited. To we, see were, each other. we were we excited. Yeah. Our our voices were like higher high. pitch. We were, high. We, we were. It was high. We were. Oh. <laughs> we, we was lit. But we're happy to be back today. Our episode is really special to me because it's sponsored by our partners at Alter Beauty. We're this is just like our first sponsorship on our podcast. We did a and whole a dope season. One at that I yeah. Love and if you guys follow me on Instagram, you may notice that I'm always in the Alta Beauty salon, always. Reason being, because I feel like, I don't know if y'all ever heard of the black girl tax, because people feel like, like if you have natural hair, I don't have natural hair, well, that I wear out, but I do have natural hair. <laughs> but they feel like black girls get charged a little bit more when they go to the salon than other people because of our our texture. Mm -hmm. So they call it the black girl tax. Well, for me, I feel like I get the Nicole Kane tax <laughs> when people do my hair. So like a, a, a natural, like just style curl my hair may, uh, people charge me like 300, 350 mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. like I walk into my Alta and they charge me what? 25, $30 to do my hair. So that's why I'm always going to Alta. Um, and I'll tell you about a situation that really, it, it scarred me in Atlanta. I used to follow this guy on Instagram and he, I mean, amazing dye jobs, like always putting out this amazing color job he, do, he does for people. So I booked an appointment. I go there. I wanted a balayage and just a, a, my hair layered. Girl, he showed me that price. Guess how much it was? A thousand. And what do you think it Probably was? Probably like, a, I was going to say about like a thousand, fifteen hundred, something like that. It was like six seventy five, oh. And I almost died. Died. Because I know, I know y'all ain't out here spending that much. Or are y'all? No. No. There are girls. And I, now, y'all in this room <laughs> is a no. Hail to the no. I'm not spending more than like 65. Like that's my, that's my highest <laughs> And that's it. I spend one eighty five. One eighty five. What, what are you for getting? I'm right here for oh, braids. But that's braids. Mm -hmm. But like, if you for like a silk press. Oh, I have never had a silk press. <laughs> I've had I've had them before. I'm not spending more than like sixty five dollars on it, and that's from somebody that I know can yeah. do it well. Mm -hmm. And then color, I think. I mean, I've seen it get up into the three, three fifty range. I think color's I've a never... different thing though, because everybody can't color. Right. And so like you that is something you you gonna get what you pay for with the color. Yeah, I agree. So I say that to say when I go to Alta, they charge me uh they have set rates no matter what. So I normally can get my hair colored for like one twenty five. Mm -hmm. And for me that's a big difference between mm -hmm. that six seventy five mm -hmm. that and I got home and I didn't even like it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I mean, I, 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 that, that hurt, that hurt <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big time. Yeah. <laughs> but I also get my brows done there. They have the benefit counter and it's just like a one-stop shop. So I'm super excited about 
you know, just this partnership and also talking about this big sale they have coming up. So now through April 4th and just in time for your spring cleaning and your beauty bag refresh, Always Ulta Beauty is holding their 21 days of beauty sale. And so like I was saying, that flyer that comes out, (laughs) girl, I get excited. It's like Christmas. I love that thing. (laughs) Every day for 21 days, you can catch items from brands like Too Faced, Anastasia Brows, Max, Smashbox and more on sale for 50% off. So you can make sure you can check it out on ulta.com site to see what items are on the low and set your calendar alerts too so that you know like which days which items are going to come out the items are only on sale for like 24 hours yeah so and they're good sales like great awesome i'm talking about like whole palettes bro (laughs) whole look full products Yes. yes I love that thing. In the spirit of 21 Days of Beauty, in today's episode, we will be discussing standards of beauty and how we define beauty within ourselves, as well as sharing our beauty and skincare routines. But first, (laughs) (laughs) let's pregame. Hey. It's like 10 a.m., so this is a week pregame, okay? We're pregaming with orange juice. (laughs) Orange juice. Uh, you know what? <laughs> Come on, girl. Okay, Come on. With, so, with alkaline water. Okay. With alkaline water. <laughs> so what's been going on? Well, in the vein of talking about beauty, have you guys seen that video of that little girl getting her hair done? Ooh, and she yeah. looks at the camera. And she's like, I'm so ugly. And the lady who I'm not sure if it's her mother or whoever is like, girl, what? It's, it was a uh, she was getting her hair done by like a, um, you know, you go to a little stylist. Well, I don't know. Hairdresser. Like, People I don't are know. saying it was a hairdresser. Possibly. But I don't know. I'm not sure if it was like her or aunt or something, mm-hmm. but it, she's getting her hair done by this uh, this uh, other lady. And the lady just turns her around. She's like, don't say that. You are beautiful. Look at your dimples. You got two and I only got one. Like, <laughs> But the little girl starts crying. It's super emotional. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of like. Uh, it's been kind of circulating like on Twitter and stuff mm-hmm. like that because a lot of celebrities were like, whoa, like this is the this is what's happening with like black girls and young mm-hmm. black girls and girls of color, like not feeling beautiful because they don't see depictions of themselves. Mm-hmm. So then shortly after what I saw was a lot of these um, like IG artists or social media artists started doing all these like different photos of her in her little outfit with her little hair done. Mm-hmm. So Aww. they did a follow up video and she was talking about, well, I can't exactly remember what she said, but she just looked a lot happier in Mm -hmm. the video. And um, I think they appeared, they're starting to do kind of like a a little media run too. They're appearing on a couple of different shows and things like that to talk about, you know, what happened like for the older lady who was doing her hair, like why, why in that moment did she just stop her and was like, girl, no, like don't say that. It was really, it was sweet. It made me cry. I shouldn't have thugged here. I think uh, someone on our team sent it to me. was like, this broke me, you know, but I want to know like, where would a young girl like that get that perspective or perception of herself? (sighs) Of being ugly? Yes. Like, is that, from peers. school th- yeah that's yeah, what i'm asking peers. is like, her like amber said it could just not be seeing depictions of herself mm-hmm. portrayed and she just doesn't see mm-hmm. like oh someone that looks like me is considered pretty or beautiful or is putting these positions or these characters or these roles that i see other little white girls mm-hmm. putting. yeah and i think uh too and th- i don't want people to take this the wrong way but i think sometimes it, it starts in the home because you have to speak life into your oh, kids yeah. oh, you have yes. to affirm your kids and Absolutely. if you don't then they're going to go out into the world. Like if you're affirming your child and constantly telling mm-hmm. her she's beautiful while there's a mother, father, when she goes out into the world, like kids can say whatever, but she's like, I'm beautiful. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So we have to remember that like a lot of the uh, perceptions we have of ourselves start at home. Right. You exactly. know? <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, what what you're allowing your kids to see or read or what you're allowing them to be around or where you're putting um, the social groups you're putting them in. Mm-hmm. I know growing up, I had like a lot of white friends, lots of them, because like I was confused, like with my skin color. I literally was like. Somebody asked me, like, what color I was. I was like, well, I'm yellow because the only thing I knew was crayons. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I would draw myself as yellow. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, no, but my actual skin. And my mom was like, no, you're black. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, the things. But she made sure that to put me in, like, 
an all black dance ballet group or like we were everything I did outside of school was with black people. My doctors were people of color. My dentists were black, like all of that stuff. And so I've done the same thing for my son. Um, but he actually had he went through the same thing in first grade because he thought he was white. And he was like, but my skin is actually I was like, no, but we're black. Like <laughs> we're actually black. Like everyone around you is black. So I had to like explain like that dynamic so that he could understand it. But what skin tone is your mom? <clears throat> Damn near transparent. Um, she is very, <laughs> she's lighter than me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like very, very fair skin. So, and then my dad is kind of like a caramely brown color. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on both sides, we range from, it's a range. It's a, it's deeper dark tone skins to lighter tone skin colors and then different hair textures. It's all the things. And so, it's I, growing up like that has been interesting, especially we have a lot of white family members, too. So it's kind of like my son is actually the only all. Well, no, there's two two uh, fully black great grandchildren of my grandmother. All the rest of them are have a parent that is white mm-hmm. um, or my cousin is half white. And then they have the other parent that's white. So they're basically white Mm -hmm. so and they look like that like they're like red haired blue eyed or whatever but my cousins have done a really good job of like being like no you come from a black family these are your relatives this is what we look like so you do you are african-american as well so Mm -hmm. there's that (laughs) i have a i have a complicated thought process i feel about it because um i was affirmed at home my Mm -hmm. dad made sure to affirm in me that i was beautiful like that was all he would ever sprinkle on me essentially but I still struggled with my perception of my own beauty for a long time so I don't know if that's the cure-all for Mm -hmm. that I think it's something that you struggle with in terms of your self-love or your self-image and eventually you'll learn okay yeah okay that reflection is me and she's beautiful but um I think it's about accepting that and knowing that for yourself like yeah other people can't do that for you yeah it's especially in the social media age and you know kids they on social media at six you know when I see whether it's like blue ivy or whoever walking around they got this cell phone and they booked and busy honey like <laughs> <laughs> for real <laughs> Like she, she be everywhere, you know, on the sidelines of a her. game with books. I saw her looking book, right? Looking like, book. No, okay, you know? is that not the cutest video? <laughs> she's like, was. no, I can't. You do it, Dad. He's like, no, I can't. You I gotta ask she's him. So oh, nice I loved it. For me. Wait, wait, tell us about the video. So basically there's a video of Blue Ivy kind of having a fangirl moment mm-hmm. with um, LeBron. So you see LeBron and Jay-Z obviously walk up and dap each other up. And she's in her cute little Fendi boots and her little Blue Ivy jacket and her cute <laughs> little braids looking cute. Yes. And she wants to get a signed basketball from LeBron. and But she is afraid to ask him. But he's being so super like, like, no, like, you know, tell me what do you want? You know, kind of thing. And she's like stomping like how kids do. Mm-hmm. they get nervous and she looks at her dad and she's like you do it and he's like no I can't ask you gotta ask and she's like um she's not even looking at him and she's like um can I get a signed ball and he was like yeah you'll get it and he's like when do you go to school and she's like on Monday he's like at the end of the school day you'll have it and it is so cute because it's like it's just so many different layers of like cuteness with like black dads mm-hmm. and girl dads and black girls with their dads and like being affirmed and mm-hmm. all that stuff yes mm-hmm. and learning how to ask for things and yeah. empower mm-hmm. her to do it and to, so that she knows and then them receiving it well mm-hmm. as well so i loved it i you know whatever i i haven't always been a, a lebron fan but i do <laughs> love some of the off-court things so you know what i was thinking about she was telling that story <laughs> sheridan <laughs> Uh, Sheridan is now Will Packer Media uh, employee. You know, we started oh, as contractors. Yes. And during the process, you know, they made her an offer, but she wanted more. And then she's like asking me and I wanted her to be, you know, I you, wanted her you got to into act. the negotiation game. I did. Oh, I love it. I, did. I wanted her. I wanted her to ask for what she wanted from, you know, the powers to be. And so because she she was like, oh, well, you know, can do you think they will? I was like, just 
here's how you do it. You reach out. You say, can we talk for a second? Mm -hmm. And you get on the phone and you state your case. And that felt like it was a, she did as soon as we got off the phone. And like, I was proud of her. It was like a a proud mom moment. Yes. (laughs) And Alex was nice though. That made it better. Like Mm -hmm. he was just very receptive. He's super, yeah, Mm -hmm. he's super nice. I mean, if you know your worth and you're you're leading with that, they already know. (laughs) So they just want to know, do you know? You know, if you ask, they should more than likely be able to meet you somewhere in Mm -hmm. there. If they don't, that's a clear sign. Hey, I don't know if I should be here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somebody else is going to give me what I'm worth. And then so. this this is a big moment for us because, like, of course, we were acquired in 2017. Um, I kept my two team. You know, I have t- I had two people on my team that had rode with me. They didn't have the greatest and the biggest media experience. But I believed in them and they believed in the brand. And so I fought to keep them on versus bringing additional people in. And then, of course, everybody is like contractors because they're trying to figure out, is this going to be a profitable business? Is this going to last? And so to see now people are getting brought in, salaried, full benefits and everything that comes with being an employee, I mean... I, it's a moment for me right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's something too, that I've girl. never, <laughs> uh, you know, it's something that I've never uh, envisioned. So, um, or yeah, I've envisioned it. I just, it's my wildest dreams. So nice. Yes. Yes. Come on. Clap 20, it up. We're going to put that clap. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. Oh, hey. Okay. Cause I was going to do the clap. I was going to do it, but a- I, let me stop being low budget. Okay. Let me stop. There we go. So. We're going to get into a few. You guys always leave us wonderful, affirming voice notes, and we're so happy about that. So we'll get into a few now. Hey, ladies, just a quick message from your friend on the other end. This is Nature from a Black Girl Spoken Podcast. Just coming through to give you guys a big congratulations on a successful first season. I am super, super, super proud of y'all. Man, I know how hard it is to record one episode, but you guys have made it all the way through and you made it look easy. (laughs) So I'm super excited for y'all and for what's to come in the future. I just had to come over here and say a big thank you to all three of you ladies for sharing your stories, for dropping wisdom, dropping your jewels and shit for putting all y'all business out in the street. (laughs) Not That it was for entertainment solely. The fact that you were able to articulate and say it and relay your stories unapologetically is what's up. Because we are tired of all that fake bullshit that's out in the world. All that superficial uh, pussyfooting and beating around the bush. Talk to me, sister, so I can understand what you're saying and relate it. (laughs) Talk to me. And I think that's what we're all looking for. Um, out here as your audience. I appreciate you guys so much. You make it look so easy and that is so encouraging to me. So with that being said, hey, here's the 2020. Here's to season two, three, four, five, six, all the way up until 100. I'm rolling with y'all. So with that being said, hey, ladies, let's do it. Let's do it. Love y'all, man. I'm so proud. I'm so proud of y'all. See? I mean, tell us how you really feel. I mean, hey. I love it. Oh, I love it. I will. I will say this: it was kind of hard for me to do season two because it's it's hard. Like we putting our like you know business out in the street, <laughs> <laughs> all the way out in the street, and it's not easy. And so I get it when people have podcasts, but they may just say, "I'm going to do a podcast. I'm going to interview successful women," because it's. You're, you're turning the attention off of yourself and having to be vulnerable and turn it on to someone else. And so that was something difficult for me just going into season two as this podcast grew. Um, I think we we're at like maybe 11 or 12,000 downloads per episode and growing. And so it's, and when people find you, they go back and listen to the old you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, honey, I ain't even that 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 girl last season was me five years ago. I'm not even her no more. So it is it is <laughs> <laughs> like you race all that. We got another voice note. Hi, ladies. My name is Anna and I'm from Georgia. Definitely want to let you guys know I enjoy your podcast and I am so appreciative of your platform. You guys are my friends in my head. 
So I'm 31 and my friends and family lives look totally different from mine because everyone is either married, have kids or married with kids while I am the single. And when I say single, I mean single with no children, just me and my puppy. So I am curious to know what do you ladies do um, if you have those moments where you feel kind of lonely and say like you wanting to do certain things, but you may not have anyone to do them with because your friends may be tied up in certain things or busy doing something else. Like what do you do when you are looking to have leisure time? Or even just chilling at home on a Friday night and you start feeling kind of down. Like, how do you process those moments? <laughs> um, I allow myself to feel the things that I feel um, first and foremost. So if I light some candles, you know, play some music and just sink into my loneliness for a bit, that's what I like to do, honestly. <laughs> but on the flip side of that... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm, I, a very, I'm, I'm a very feeling person though. I co-sign the feel so the feels. I really like that. to feel things even if it's not my favorite feeling I like to feel it because I feel like you might end up in this cyclical trap of uh, finding things to fill a void instead of really connecting and centering with yourself and finding out why is it that I feel this way um, because aloneness and loneliness is not the same thing. Ooh, preach. So why do you feel lonely in these moments instead of just comfortable in your aloneness? You know, so I would sit back and discover that a little bit. And not only that, but I wouldn't wait for people in order to experience life. Um, mm, you the can, doors <laughs> of the church are now open. Thank you, God. So you can go out and do the things by yourself, sis. Like I do that all the time. I go on trips by myself. I go. I to take myself out to myself. dinner all yes, the time. I'll yes. be. Yes. I enjoy my own company. You know, I love my company. I love me, you mm -hmm. know, myself. So I think, um, yeah, adopt some of that, you know. Also, you know, if you really, really want somebody, go on Bumble. Get somebody, holla at him. Just be like, hey, let's go get some coffee. And, you know. You know what? We're going to do a whole podcast how on <laughs> how you can how navigate you dating apps because your girl ain't doing it right. I want to <laughs> say this is a perfect opportunity for me to plug some things. What you so, plug in? Well, first of all, oh, she's, uh, <laughs> first of all, she's, you know, 31. So, of course, she's fresh off of that uh, Saturn return. Or in when, the midst of it. When your friends are kind of falling off, mm -hmm. like you guys are going different ways because of marriage, kids, or you just growing out of people because you're finding who you really are. So that's the proper, perfect opportunity to find your new tribe. And to do that, you have to, well, there's go on sites like meetup.com and, and, and find put in your interests and find people who have similar interests and in meetups that are they are having. Of course, we have the EXO tribe over at EXO Nicole. Nice. Um, <laughs> and you can sign up by going to members.exonicole.com. Great tribe of amazing women. We just had a meetup just pa this past weekend of over 30 women in Atlanta, a brunch. It was amazing. It was fun. And most of those women are going to be at Pajamas and Lipstick, which is coming up on March 20th, and that's going to be a good, amazing girls' night and experience. Um, that is the reason why I've curated a lot of these events that you guys see that are like girls' nights, because I know that a lot of women are just in a place where they have grown out of their friends. It, it feels lonely. They're moving to new cities, you know, and just not being able to, they're in this space of loneliness. So, over at X on the Cole, we have a lot of things where women can meet up and, you know, find their tribe. I, I plug pajamas and lipstick. It's sold out, guys. <laughs> but we will. It's sold out in two hours. But we will be doing ticket giveaways on the X on the Cole and pajamas and lipstick Instagram all next week. By that time, this podcast would be out. So please tune in. We would love to see you there. <laughs> but y'all are traveling to other cities. So this is yes, a great time are. to travel and see your other single friends in other cities. We're, we will um, be taking pajamas and lipstick to Dallas and D.C. Um, later this year. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I was just going to say, please don't look at married people and kids and think, oh, let me go do that. So I'm not lonely all the time because that's exactly how people get into marriages and they marry people because they're lonely. And that is the most dangerous way to be. And you will be divorced. And kids are tough. They are a full time job. You don't want to be lonely. Have a kid. 
For real. You will not be lonely. You will you never won't be in have the time bathroom to yourself. By yourself. You won't be in the shower by yourself. Like there's a whole lot of like all of that. So don't look at someone and think, oh, their marriage and all this other kind of I hate when people turn to stuff like that. Just, you know, like Sheridan was saying, you know, learn how to enjoy your own time by yourself. And like Nicole is saying, go out here and get in some groups and meet some other single ladies. If they, your friends are doing their life, you got to find a new one mm-hmm. and you got to find a new tribe. Long story short. It's funny because uh, I know two people that have told me when they get home from work, one has a husband and one has a husband and like six kids. And they both have told me, even the one without kids, when they drive home from work, they just sit in the driveway for like, 20 to 30 minutes just so that they can have time alone before they go in their house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they're looking at me as a single woman, like, girl, you're so lucky. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, let's get into this happy hour. As we mentioned earlier, Alta Beauty is having its 21 days of beauty sale. And if you haven't checked out these deals, you need to log on to Alta.com every day through April 4th. There are a lot of good deals you do not want to miss, like 50% off select lashes, Bare Minerals Finishing Powder, Anastasia, Beverly Hills Brow Wiz, Benefit Brow Services, and many more. As I repeat, the sale is April 4th, so hurry in today and get those deals. Tell them X and Nicole sent you. In the spirit of the sale, we want to take this opportunity to discuss all things beauty. So we're going to get into happy hour. A moment of honesty, ladies. Do you look in the mirror every day? and see beauty yes I knew Sheridan was gonna say yes <laughs> let me I want to like just package up your self-esteem and just put it in a <laughs> bag and send it to me okay I mean you know when I first wake up I'm like oh I look puffy and kind of dry but it's okay like <laughs> <laughs> like some skin creams can help that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly but for the most part the gist I, I do see beauty when I look in my in the, in the mirror at myself like I said, it took me a long time to get there, but I did and I'm here and I love it. So I'm not trying to get off this ride. I know that's right. You know? I mean, if I'm being honest, there are some days I wake up and be like, damn, hmm, you look ugly today. But you know what? It's cool. <laughs> like if today's just an ugly day, but it don't stop like the, it don't stop my shine, bro. Like it's temporary. Look, the shine is on the inside. But there are some days I'm like them eyebrows, girl, bull by that skin looking toe up. Like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I can't wake up everything and, and look at myself physically, if especially if I'm not taking care of myself, like drinking water like I'm supposed to be doing or working out like I'm supposed to be working out. Or if I like, have you ever been like, OK, you ever been drinking like real hard the night before and mm-hmm. you wake up the next day? You're not pretty that day. Like you look janky. <laughs> like and so and that's cool, but it still doesn't <laughs> take away from like what's on the inside. So physically, it's an ugly day, but <laughs> every day I'm like I have a beautiful personality. So those are the things that shine. <laughs> yeah. It, it's weird because I, I mean, I don't even look in the mirror and see physical anymore. I, I think I used to look in the mirror and overanalyze my eyes, my eyebrows, my cheeks, like everything and I don't But it's crazy because I have the highest self-esteem when I'm single. It's not until I'm dating that I start looking in the mirror and try to view what he's viewing versus how I view myself, if that makes sense. So it's like, hmm, you know what I mean? I can't explain it, but I I need to work on that because that's going to make me have an excuse to try to be single for the rest of my life. (laughs) (laughs) are Are you projecting, do you think? Like are you projecting what? your inner insecurities onto this person's thought process? It's weird because I don't have inner insecurities until I'm dating someone. Because it's, I that's think so he would weird. Probably look at you like you're the most beautiful woman he's ever seen in his life. The way you look at me when I walk yeah. in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Come on. You know, I. Just, it, like, I'm putting this out there. You know, that's my my challenge mm-hmm. right now is I can't view myself through the lens of everyone else. Like, I think I'm a beautiful person and I'm so proud of myself. Mm-hmm. And that should be all that matters. Yes. Right. Yes. Exactly. I know what you're talking about, though. Like, I had experienced that, too, when I was dating. But I had to get beyond it because I used to drive myself insane. Crazy. And I was just like this. I can't do this all the time. But it's also trying to self-sabotage yourself, too, yep, to yeah. make yourself think exactly there's that. no way he could really like me. Exactly. Yeah, he really sure. does. Mm-hmm. Especially when you've seen me with my bonnet on. Hello, <laughs> bonnet. So 
toe up. <laughs> like when you see me, look at toe up. And you still here, boo. Okay. Exactly. Like you just got to let it go. The what bonnet the, is a true sign. Oh, the bonnet. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I have a jumbo bonnet. Have you seen the jumbo bonnet? Yeah, I wear jumbo bonnet. So. My bonnet comes down to the middle of my back. Oh, you know what? <laughs> it does. It, I'm not lying. I am not lying. I love that thing. I could put every hairstyle in it and yours too, if you like. Yeah. We could sleep in it together. Like, I love that bonnet. It's weird because I was reading a book back in the day, and I think the girl in the book, she would wake up before her man and like. Um, that was in Napoli Ever After. Yes, it was. Yeah. And wasn't it in oh, another yeah. movie too, though? And there was probably another book where, but this girl would put on like mascara before he woke up. Like with Napoli Ever After, what would she, she do did to her make sure? whole thing. Like, oh, let me get my hair together. Let me get my, my face That's together. And let me just put myself, position myself on this pillow enough so that he thinks I woke up looking majestic and beautiful. <laughs> I mean, but she didn't have to do all that. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah. You gonna get this open mouth sleep. In this drool. That's what you're getting. And, and this, this eye and crust. And this eye crust. Boom. Okay. And this edge that's over here. You're getting it. Okay. Because that's what it, this is the reality. It's and beauty underneath. Breath. Okay. They love it. What's your first memory of beauty? Because, you know, we're talking about the young girl earlier in the conversation. And that's why they're seeing it within yourself or seeing it outside of you. I would say my mom. I remember her sitting at her vanity, um, applying like her favorite, like plum colored lipstick. And that was my first perception of beauty, I guess. And I look at her all the time and I see beauty and it's very simple and effortless. Mm -hmm. She just wears her berry lipstick and I'm just like, mom, you're so gorgeous. If I could be a fraction of that. (laughs) I I don't, I don't really know. And okay. Growing, growing up, um, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna put this out there. The I would always people would always tell me I was pretty all the time. I used to just think like, you know, I, it always freaked me out, especially when I was a little girl. People would be like, "Oh, you look like a baby doll" and all this type of stuff, and I was like, "What are they talking about?" Like, <laughs> it was very odd to me because I looked like everyone else around me, but they were only saying it to me. That's how I felt, and so, so beauty was like a I don't know people. Oh, I always said that I was pretty. I used to always think like, well, I feel like I'm just kind of like regular. Like I'm not more extra than anyone else. Not trying to downplay myself, but I'm like, why are they saying this thing to me? But I would I probably have to probably say my mom as well. My mom used to have the fullest head of hair. Holy smokes. And it used to be all the way down her back. And it was huge. And I remember we would walk into things and people would just like stare at her and so that was regular for me and so I didn't really understand it until she explained like okay this is what's happening and this is why this is happening this way and then with my aunts they look exactly like her so I, when I was with them the same stuff was starting to happen so it had it was definitely probably for my family yeah mm-hmm. for sure my grandmother was like a barber right so she was a first a barber. Aunt, yeah a barber okay. so she did <laughs> She owned a barber shop, oh, and it was wow. the first, uh, I guess, my first taste of entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. Looking back now, I didn't know that's what it was. But she, you know, cut these men hair, and she had this, like, infectious laugh. And I remember thinking, I want to be, like, you know, this beautiful woman, but she cutting hair left and right. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I want to be just like her when I grow up. So I think that was my first, like, first person or perception of beauty and I always thought my mom like everyone would fall head over heels over my mother all the time like she you know popular girl in high school just very beautiful woman that and everyone knew her Mm -hmm. so yeah that's a dope story. <laughs> I love that story. Your grandma was, come on, granny. Yeah, cut know, your right? hair, you cut know. Hair. Trailblazer. <laughs> Seriously. I think it's interesting that our moms were kind of our first, like, yeah. that matriarch. So it, start, it definitely I mean, starts there makes again. Sense, yeah. Right? Like, it's your parents, it's the people you're around all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, they always say, like, the first woman a boy loves is his mother, mm-hmm. obviously. I just, the women in my family just, they would always, to me, I thought it was real bougie and snooty, but they always walk like with their heads up all the time, like like made an effort to walk like, you know, and very confident. And then in our family, like I said, we have tons of hair. We walk around like big Q-tips, like just hair everywhere. So like I never was attached 
to my hair and no neither were the women in my family they'll cut their hair off in a second and it'll grow right back so like there's also like even with hair standards there's some things that like I don't prescribe to because mm-hmm. I, that's not the where I came up from I understand why women do some of the things that they do but for me I'm like it's just hair um but yeah I mean that makes sense to me like your mom your grandma right mm-hmm. aunt being in media as a woman of color do you feel there's a pressure to look a certain way absolutely yes <laughs> <laughs> quick and I talk about this a lot actually I feel like I'm expected to wear makeup or be camera ready the terminology and that's why she freaked out <laughs> I had a whole meltdown when she went to a, a press junket exactly because it's like these expectations that you're supposed to look a certain way and present a certain way otherwise I guess maybe you're not valuable enough maybe mm-hmm. and I think that's what makes me very insecure about makeup and feeling like I have to wear a mask in order to be Mm -hmm. worthy enough to be in the spotlight, I guess. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I don't feel my most confident or my most beautiful or my most secure when I have a full face of makeup on. I, um, I don't mind wearing a full face of makeup, but I don't want it caked on and I don't want to not look like myself anymore. Like Mm -hmm. I have a thing about my eyebrows. Like I have eyebrows. Please don't give me no big giant eyebrows. (laughs) That Insta brow, they call it. (laughs) I will stop. Every time I go get my makeup done, I stop the girl. I'm like, do not give me no giant eyebrow. I don't need the eyebrow to touch my ear. I don't need that. Okay. (laughs) So like, but I feel that I think you should have some sort of routine. <laughs> <Touch> my <ears>. <laughs> Look. <laughs> sure. But I feel like you should have like some kind of routine just to like, cause sometimes I look like I have like a dark circles under my eyes or whatever. And so it's like, okay, just a little concealer, a little mascara an eyebrow and like a nice lip and we'll call it a day. Um, but on camera, the thing that I've noticed for me is it picks up everything that's on my skin and mm-hmm. it'll age me mm-hmm. by like 10 years. And so that's the only reason why I feel like when I'm on camera, I need a little makeup out and about, not necessarily out there on some shades, but a little bit of concealer and mm-hmm. that's about it. But I'm not a whole face like yeah. every single day. For me, skincare routine, even putting on makeup to me is kind of like therapy. And I, like I remember this guy, Austin Brown, it's actually Rebby Jackson's son. Is that how you surname? Ribby? Rebby? Well, he's one of the Jacksons. I had, oh, <laughs> I remember Rebby. Yeah, uh-huh. Rebby's son. So I had uh, subleased an apartment from him in L.A. for like a year and a half. I had Janet Jackson's piano in, in my living room. Like, he put, I know. Is this going in the book? Like, <laughs> I got so many elements Janet here. Jackson. Yeah, okay. but um, he uh, put me on to painting as therapy. Like, you know, like we went out and we brought some paint and some paint brushes and the what is it the canvas yeah, or canvas, whatever easel. and and the um when I'm doing my makeup with the makeup brushes and everything it, it reminds me I'm so focused on getting things right that I notice that it's almost like a, a meditation stage where mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about nothing but the face right now and I'm mm-hmm. like wait that's a little form of self-care therapy for me but yeah being in media when I first started as a blogger they used to tear my ass <laughs> <laughs> they used to tear my ass up on the blogs. You know what I mean? Like everything about me, everything about my body, everything about my face or whatever. So that did drive me into making sure I had a full face when I went out, making sure my hair was laid. Cause honey, like don't let me have a bad day. And you, back then, if you went to any event, you would end up on the wire. And, mm-hmm. and if you're on the wire, any media outlet can pull the picture and put it on their site. So you have a bad day, you're going to have a bad month because it's everywhere. And so that's why I think I, I said it in the money episode. There was a year where I was going to all these events. I'm invited everywhere. I'm getting hair, makeup all the time. I'm invited to, to uh, interview these celebs. And I've spent almost, what, 35 k in glam, you know, hair, makeup, styling, whatever, to go to these events, you know, just for... And just to not show, look like, look a mess, you know, this one or two times. I mean, now I don't feel the need to, like when I'm invited to events, I definitely don't get styled or anything. A lot of times I do do my makeup. Sometimes I get my makeup artist to do it. But for the most part, I'm like, y'all gonna get what I look like, you know, <laughs> what I try to do at home. And this brow ain't gonna be on point, but. It ain't gonna touch your ear either. <laughs> but I, and that's why I tell people there's so much freedom and irrelevancy. And I'm not saying that I'm irrelevant, but I'm just not as relevant as I used to be. And so it allows me to go out and look however I want to look and not have to worry about people posting me up in everywhere. And that's that. <laughs> <laughs>
Sherry, you mentioned you feel insecure when you have a uh, like a full face on. That if you, you know, met a guy and you have on makeup or he doesn't see your natural hair, it makes you insecure. Can you tell us more about that? Well, I feel like I already touched on it a little bit. Uh, I just don't feel like I'm myself when mm-hmm. I have makeup on. Um, maybe braids, not necessarily, but with makeup, definitely. I just don't feel confident. So I don't like the person that I'm presenting to mm-hmm. this person that I'm trying to get to know. Like when I went to Mexico to meet Boo, yeah, I didn't wear makeup the whole time. So yeah, I was just, I just like you to see me. Yeah, you for know, sure. I like to be naked and in that way. And if you can't accept me in that way, then that's, that's what I would like to know, you know? Cause I'm just not going to wake up every day. I like that. And my hair you is going to be looking Frederick Douglass on it a will many be. occasion. It will okay. Be. Many occasions. And I need you to understand she said Frederick that. Douglass. I need you to understand why we put, and accept that. Why we got to bring that. Frederick Douglass into because this? Because he's like, a black figure who had some hair that, that was is similar interesting. To exactly. How I wake up. And from. everyone gets that <laughs> reference <laughs> because that's exactly how I look. Why we got to bring Frederick Douglass? Okay. Well, then we can bring in Samuel L. Jackson from Glass because. It's like that, that is that's the a hair. character, yeah. That is the hair. Some Tyler Perry hair. hair dudes. A Tyler Perry yes. hair dudes. Yes, that's yes. the hair. You know and what I mean? I'm going to yes. wake up like that. And I'm yes. going to wake up with this beat up face one of these days. And I go to the gym a lot and I can't wear makeup in there. I sweat too hard. Some people do, though. And it's, girl, <laughs> do not even get hey, me started. Hey, some people are coming straight from work. Don't judge them. Some. some. But <laughs> don't judge them. That after five rush. Don't that, judge the extra not, after, that, after that five rush. That is actually not the group I'm judging. I'm judging the group that puts on makeup to no, come to the gym. gym. Well, that's you know, what I'm talking about. That's where all the brother's at. You know what I mean? No, Especially in Atlanta. Come on. And they're trying to work <laughs> out. I know. But I know. They ain't paying much because I be having my headphones on. Do y'all think that men are like, oh, wow, you don't got concealer on today? No, no, not at all. I don't think not men. All. I don't think so. Here's the here's my thing with not men. At all. We got on this before. Men don't. They know. don't know. <laughs> they but don't. then they'll go and do things, and they'll like a bunch of stuff where you can see it on social media platforms, and then they'll tell you they don't like that. that yes, don't got you do. To do with me, but that don't got nothing to do with me though. Do you know Here what I'm we go. <laughs> like here we go. You liking pictures of someone have to do with me here and how you feel about go. me and my beauty, like you know. I think it's a contradiction to what you're saying you like and what you don't like, but which makes it confusing. Amber. It's not about me. I'm not talking about my insecurity or my self esteem. <laughs> what I'm talking about is how mm, I let you finish. You're right. What okay. I'm talking about is how men do things and how they push narratives and how some of those narratives do drive some beauty standards. And I do think it's a it's a bad bad uh, self feeding cycle from both ends. But I don't like the idea of men going and, and liking all these things and praising certain things and putting certain things up on a pedestal and then turning to me and be like oh but I don't like that yes you do I mean I don't think the guy should sit here and tell you he doesn't like it though um I I wouldn't accept that as a truth um I think you can like many things I like many things that doesn't mean I like you less no no no. like I like dudes with abs so it goes to the point it's not about that point it's about the point you just made Uh you're lying to me I'm not lying to you no 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 when you say you don't like something when you do yes he's trying to 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 coax whoever because they feel a certain way they feel threatened right no, by the, by the pictures it's just liking. simply the lie. I, it's just simply the lie. But so you're not saying that some women don't feel like, oh, you can't ha- follow these girls on Instagram or you can't like these girls. Again, pictures. I'm only talking about me. I'm not talking I, about I some women. Well, let me about, tell you something. No, right here. No, I'm talking about the lie. Mm-hmm. You're going over here. Let's uh-huh. just well, stop at the lie. Uh-huh. Well, let me tell y'all. Instagram then took that feature away, so it's no more. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not even relevant anymore. Because they, thank God, they took the feature away where you could see what he's no, like. You can still see. You can still. You see. can still go oh, on and hit the likes on what? the picture, and you can see who's liked what, and then you can see, and it shows you oh, who no. you follow. <laughs> oh, I'm an investigator. Oh, Do you, have you seen, wait, have you seen the episode of Grownish where um, <laughs> they were trying to find somebody, and then Anna was like, "Look, go to Venmo and then see who he's Venmo." Da, 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 da. Oh, like, no, me. No, it's me. No. But <laughs> on Instagram, if you go to the photo, you can hit the likes. Y'all it not. shows you the names, and mm-hmm. it tells you based on who follows you first if they like that photo there's several <laughs> men that i know they be liking these big booty girls and all this but other type of stuff like a big booty though i'm not telling you you shouldn't <laughs> i'm not telling you you shouldn't i'm not telling you you shouldn't but if that is i've had a let me tell you i've had 
a dude that tried to talk to me a long time ago. His preference was women who had deeper toned skin than I did. Mm -hmm. Yet he was talking to me. And then I thought, but this goes against what you said you like. You don't really like me. And then when it came down to it, that's actually what ended up happening. Now, am I saying that happens for every single person in the world? Absolutely not. But I am saying there is something that you should be looking at. If I'm telling you, oh, I like tall men, I'm really, and then I go after a short guy or whatever the situation is, and I'm making this very, very, very basic. Mm -hmm. I might, I I may be only going over here because it feels safe or for some other motive other than I might other than I might like him all I'm saying is investigate why somebody is saying the things and then doing something completely different why are your actions describing something different if you like all women or you're like yeah I like big booty women but you got a little booty but it's like a little poke and I like that too that's that that makes sense to me but if you're saying like you're liking all these things these are the things that you're always watching it is your preference and then you're telling me it's not that's a lie no, not really, because yeah. I can tell I, my preference is I my preference is to date a black man. But if I go and date a white guy, that does not mean that I do not like black men. OK, that's how <laughs> I feel as well. I mean, and then sometimes it's the person that makes me change my mind. Maybe I didn't yeah. know I liked Mexican. Then I tried one and I was like, OK. I like this. See how she keeps squeezing that Mexican story <laughs> up in here? She's going to get that Mexican view saying. boo up in here. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You don't really know until you know. You, you, sometimes. What, what is your current skincare beauty routine? I like, what is it? Is it RX Skincare? I think Urban it's Skin Urban, RX. Urban Skin RX. I do like a lot of their products. They had a pumpkin spice mask. Mm-hmm. Bussin. I mean, brand new skin every time I put it on my face. And I loved it. I got it. I think in a gift bag or something. And that was my first experience with it. A lot of their products are really, really, really good. And I know they got that at Ulta. Mm -hmm. I used to like, well, what's her name? Megan Good. You know, she, her skin been popping since Mm -hmm. 1998 and she put me on a Peter Roth um, product. So I like their, but they're getting a little pricey for me. I got to bring it down, (laughs) find some new stuff because Oh, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, hopefully they're a part of this Alta Beauty cell because they they are pricey, but they have your skin popping. Do you guys have like go to must have products? The Anastasia Brow Wiz pencil must have. Which is 50 percent off the first day. Thank Holy Jesus. First day, 50 percent off. (laughs) I love that. I love get um, two or three of those. I love the lipstick from Urban Decay and the color is naked. I like the lipstick and I like the lip liner. I like the it's a mascara. It's called Better Than Sex. Oh, yeah. uh, Too Too Faced. Yeah. Love it. I also like the uh, spray that uh, holds your makeup on from Urban Decay. It's You spray it on after you put all your makeup on and it holds it on for like 24 hours. Bussin'. Um, <laughs> Bussin'. What else do I like? <laughs> NARS I love, but sometimes it'd be out of my price range. Not if it's 50% off. If it's 50% off, though, I might go up in there. I also like... Uh, so this is only the beauty products, correct? For the 50% and skincare. off. And skincare. And like I said, our Urban RX is one. Oh, they have those little masks with the like the animal faces on them mm-hmm. that are in there. Mm-hmm. Love those. Mm, and the Ardell uh, lashes. If I have to get lashes, I get those. I think I get number like 116 is the number I get because they're like natural. <laughs> yeah. So you can't really tell mm-hmm. like that I have them or whatever. Those are like my most that I usually go up in there and I get. Oh, I also there's a foundation that NYX has and I can't remember the name of it or NYX NYX. I think Mm -hmm. they have a foundation that I really, really love that it always matches my skin tone when I get a tan because I have to buy two foundations. Because, you know, I, I have a winter white yeah. that's normally <laughs> over my skin. And then I have a glow in the summer. So I have to wear two different ones. But those are the two that I really love. So I mean, the one that I really love. What about you, Sheridan? I like Mario Badescu a lot. I really love uh, his rose water mm-hmm. um, facial spray. And I use that at, in the morning or I use that like when I have when I do put on foundation. And I like to use the night, the night one that has it has lavender in it. Lavender and chamomile. Oh, I need it's to get so this. It's so soothing. It's so relaxing. It's perfect before I put on my night cream. And I really like their glycolic foaming cleanser as mm-hmm. well. So, yeah. Yeah, the Anastasia brow products is like the holy grail of getting your brow together. (laughs) The holy grail. 
also, is it called Booksome? Boxum? Oh, Booksome. <gasps> Booksome. Like they had a lip that was just, I was buying three or four at a time and I went in there recently. Their and, gloss? Oh Holy my gosh. Smokes. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I love their products, but yeah, they've just continued some of the lip products that I like and I'm not happy about that, but yeah, that's my Holy Grails right there. wrap on this episode of X on Nicole's Happy Hour. If you're loving what you're hearing so far, please drop us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and show us some love on our Instagram at XO Happy Hour. Want to share something with us? Leave us a message on the website XOHappyHour.com. Thanks for listening. And as always, check out XONicole.com for all other updates. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>